Welcome to Illivision. Surprisingly beautiful women in Greek mythology. So we've all heard of Aphrodite's captivating beauty and the beautiful Helen, the face that launched a thousand ships, yada, yada, yada. But what about the hidden gems, the unknown and overlooked beauties in Greek mythology? Well, here are a few that don't get the recognition that they deserve. There's Echidna, associated with slime and disease, who was the mother to the Sphinx, Scylla the sea monster, a hundred-headed dragon, the Hydra, the Chimera, and the multi-headed dog Cerberus, who wasn't even cute as a puppy. Wait a minute, you must be saying, this entity is surely an ogre. But you would be wrong. Yes, okay, she had the lower body of a serpent, but Hesiod describes her and her upper half as nymph-like. Nymphs generally considered as very attractive beings. <laughs> Goodness knows there are enough gods who chased after them. Hesiod also described her as being fair of face, which is ancient speak for bloody beautiful. Additionally, she apparently never grew old. Yes, yeah, she lived in a cave and represented slime and had a bunch of monster kids, but beautiful she was, uh, at least her upper half. Another monstrous myth understanding is the absolutely tragic story of Medusa, who, according to some legends, was a beautiful maiden. Ovid states that she was very lovely and the hope of many suitors, but her hair was changed into serpents by Athena, as a consequence of her having laid with Poseidon, without her consent, I must add. Her head was now so fearful in appearance that everyone who looked at it was changed into stone. There is Psyche of the Psyche and Eros story. She was a mortal princess of extraordinary beauty, so much so that not only would men mistake her for the beautiful goddess Aphrodite, but they actually started to worship Psyche instead of Aphrodite, which you can well imagine made the goddess rather angry. I'll cover the full Psyche story in another episode, but in short, Psyche ends up hooking up with the god of love, Eros. You see, curiosity got the better of her, and she breaks a promise to Eros not to look at him, and ends up losing her love. Devastated, she roams the earth trying to regain her love, trying to overcome many challenges set by the vengeful and jealous Aphrodite, including a trip to the underworld where she meets our old friend Cerberus. She eventually regains her Eros and her love and this ravishing beauty, whom no man could avoid being besotted with, was made a goddess residing upon Mount Olympus for all of her trouble. Next up, we have a woman who was brought up by a bear in the wild, who grew up to be a faster runner than any man, pissed off some petulant misogynistic men in the Caledonian bear hunt as they couldn't stand the fact that a woman was included in this epic activity. She was no damsel in distress. She was as kick-ass as she was beautiful and great with a bow and arrow. She was the only woman on the ship, the Argo, that, filled with heroes, sailed to Colchis so that Jason could obtain the Golden Fleece. <laughs> Jason, a man who had so much help from women in his story that I find it very difficult to see how he can be called hero and receive all the glory. So meet the kick-ass athletic beauty, Atalanta. And beautiful she was. She has been described as having unrivaled beauty with the capacity to inspire fear. Apparently, no man would not have fallen in love with her at first sight, but have difficulty meeting her gaze. Both Ovid and Hesiod mention her beauty, and Hesiod states that she had no peer in beauty and had a fierce look in her eyes. She inspired fear and desire in equal measure. Atalanta, extremely beautiful, but not to be messed with. In fact, don't even look. Speaking of kick-ass women not to be messed with, let's not forget Penteselia, the Amazon queen. She fought Achilles during the Trojan War, and whilst he won, well, killed her. He fell in love with her when his gaze met 
her last. Yeah, okay, all a bit late, but fell in love with her he did on account of her bravery and beauty. And last but not least, Alkmini, whose beauty isn't acknowledged as she is put in the shade by her famous son, Hercules, or correctly in Greek, Heracles. Zeus himself was enamored with her and tricked her into bed by pretending to be her husband, Amphitryon. Yep, another instance of Zeus's trickery to facilitate his appalling abuse. Hesiod describes Alcmene in his work The Shield of Heracles as surpassing the tribe of women in both beauty and height, and that no one, no one, man or woman, could match her in wisdom. In another hit to Aphrodite, Hesiod states that her face and eyes exuded the same charm as that of the golden Aphrodite. And there you have it. In exploring the surprisingly beautiful women of Greek mythology, we uncover a rich tapestry of diverse characters whose allure transcends the conventional norms of beauty. From Echidna with her serpentine lower body and captivating upper half, to Psyche, whose mortal beauty rivals that of the goddess Aphrodite. The beautiful but misunderstood Medusa, punished for a crime she did not commit. While Atalanta's physical prowess is masked only by her unrivaled beauty and fierce gaze. And Alcmene who surpassed all women in beauty and everyone in wisdom. These women challenge our perceptions and captivate our imaginations, reminding us that beauty is not skin deep. It comes in many forms and is often intertwined with wisdom, strength, courage, and resilience. <laughs>